you hello great people african traveler again guys today's a beautiful day as you can see i'm in a construction site so there's something amazing coming and guys you don't believe this is a story that is gonna encourage a lot of you guys especially those of you who left the country and i've been wondering should we come back you know do you have a future in this country and uh, i hope you guys will be uh, inspired as well as i was so i have a friend called fred and uh, he left the country went to the u.s stayed there for 10 years and came back and did is doing an amazing job so guys i hope his story will inspire you and yeah so guys without further ado let's go and meet fred fred <laughs> yeah how are you good, good to, to meet you, you again good to see this you, is man. like the third time you're meeting ever since the first day right, right i'm not going to talk a lot so i'm going to leave the talking to fred as i ask and you know get to know more about Fred. So Fred, Karibu, welcome to my channel. Right, thank you so much. Thank uh, you so much. And uh, you can just introduce yourself. Who's Fred? So my name is Fred Jero. I am a director of a company. This is a company that I started, as you said, when I was in the United States of America. I left the country in 2009, yeah. around November. Yeah. And I, the first place I landed was in California. Uh, so before you left, uh, what were you doing in the country at that time? Uh, in the country, I was, you know, I had just left high school. Uh, I was planning to join into uh, this school called Kenya Mass School of Communication. Uh, and during that time, as I was waiting to join, uh, I, I had started a job in the railroad for graphic design. Uh, I love doing stuff, you know, like designing stuff. Amazing. But during that time, that's the time I got uh, a visa to go to the US. So I got a green card. You get a green card at that time? Yeah, yeah. I got a green card and I left the country. That was which year? 2009. 2009. November. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, the, the land of milk and then. Yeah, yeah, the land of opportunities, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how it was. So in California, my brother was already there. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one who hosted me. So I stayed with him for about a year. And then it was during recession time. I mean, the economy, yeah, yeah. The economy was not doing so well. So I joined the military. Uh, just to get the basis of, you know, to give myself a foundation in uh -huh. America. And luckily enough, I was, I was very successful in the military. Uh, I, I got, uh, you know, what do you call it? I got money to go to school, you know. So, oh, so you started school. studying in the military? Yeah, well, when I was still in the military, because that was my mission. Uh -huh. So after that, I got out. I got a job uh, with the federal government under the the United States Postal Services. Yeah. Then after that, I, I went to another job, which was, uh, I, I was a code enforcement officer. I was working in the city of Citrus Heights. City of which city? It's called City of Citrus Heights. It's in wow. the capital of California. Ah. Yeah. And as a code enforcement, I was more into construction of, the, I mean, what we call buildings inspections, uh, checking on the permits, you know, enforcing what we call the building codes. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, so basically planning instead yeah, of yeah, 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 I used to work with the, the city planners with the building of issues, you mm -hmm. know, just to make sure that the city was in the right uh, you know, everything was working right in, within the city. Within the city. In terms of buildings, yes. And you worked there for how long? I worked there for about two years before I relocated actually. So that was the last point that you was the last job, yeah. That's the you last stayed in the US for ten years. For ten years mm -hmm. and this was the last job. Yeah, but uh, how was uh, how was it for you over there? Well, America is is, is a great country. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, uh, life is 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 more advanced, let's say. Yeah. Uh, but also, you know, looking at back our country, I saw a lot of need. You know, opportunities. Remember, it is in this life now. If you want to actually do business, you have to look for the need mm -hmm. and the, or the problem then you solve that problem for you to be able to, to stay in the business. So I didn't have so much of problems in America. You are actually you're doing a very good job. Of course, yeah. Of and course. It's crazy how you decide to come back yeah. when you're when you're doing well. Right, right. Well why yeah. why would you do that? You see, it's I, I feel like I was I was born to be a business person. Because even when I was young I had started a few things yeah, and there. I always learned to build something from the scratch and see it grow. Um, mm -hmm. And when I saw the opportunity in terms of 
uh, real estate in Kenya, uh, I decided to do that actually fully. To uh, focus on to focus on that, and you know, since I was able to start it from the scratch and see it grow, yeah, uh, I didn't have any choice other than to just leave the country. You know, we have this perspective that if you are abroad, you have a lot of money. Did you mm. come with a lot of bad ma money bags, <laughs> and yeah. you just decided to come into real estate? Those, the, uh, or were you coming here before the before two, the ten years? I would like also to know that. Uh, so my first visit after 2009, after I left for the, to the US yeah. in 2009, my first visit was in 2015, around June. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had come to the country looking for some business opportunities. And uh, during that time, my brother called Edward was already in the construction industry, although he was an architect uh, working for another company. Yeah. So when I came and I told him what I want, uh, he told me we can do uh, real estate, but of which to me, he thought I have a lot of money, but I did have a lot of money. So I told him that might not be possible because real estate, as you know, requires a lot of money. Yeah, definitely. So I told him, well, although I want to do business, not in that kind of sector, but he encouraged me. He gave me an idea of which I bought into it, which was, you know, because he's an architect, he's gonna design the houses, we will resell them, and then we generate the funds to build from the pre-sales. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. So I didn't have money actually in the account, so I went and borrowed some money. I borrowed so you money. borrowed the money from I borrowed 20,000, 20,000 US dollars. 20,000, that is like 2 million per shilling. Yeah, so I borrowed the money. So we, I sent the money to him, he was able to form a company, and then he started uh, one of the projects that he wanted to do. Yeah. But in actual sense, they never took off during you know, the first time. So it's kind of, my two million did not do exactly what <laughs> I wanted. They feel like going crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes you feel like so. You know, remember this is not your money, you're still paying some loans, uh, interest on it. You know? yeah. So it wasn't a very encouraging for the first time. And I told him, you know, man, this is just an idea. So it's kind of not okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Then, no, the first uh, venture you invest, invested on went down? Yeah, well, not you went down. But those are a few issues with the land that uh, we wanted to develop. Yeah. Uh, the owner was a little slow to correct uh, some of the things which the government really wanted. Mm -hmm. But it slowed down. But during that time, so my brother, again, with his courage, he was able now to venture to another project, which succeeded. And that became the story of of us as Delta Homes. Wow. So the first project, I think we, we've gone there, yeah, yeah. yeah, the 19 houses were built within eight months. Uh, the second project came on board, uh, it was able to do within another eight months, 20 units. And things went on like that until the company grew and became uh, big enough for me now to be able to move from US to, to Kenya. And you know, so right now you guys have built how many houses? I'll say approximately the ones that have been involved in they're about 70 units because we've done 41 units uh, since i came back 41 units along the kitsu uh -huh. area uh, we are doing that unit in uh, banana i'm doing 10 units in Raqqa. Uh, these ones are 97 units so i think that's maybe around 100 or so. 100 plus plus from well, the time i came in but before then if i combine uh, from the time he started doing it, that was about, it is about around 400 houses. 400 houses? Yes, 400 houses. Within Nairobi and Kembu County? Mostly. Just Kembu County. We concentrate on Kembu County because of the proximity. Oh. It's much navigable to the people working to the CBD, so it's much easier. Yeah. Uh, we find Kembu being very prime because of those, uh, the environment around it. And you have a family there? I have a family, yes, I'm married. <laughs> I have one wife, yeah. one child. <laughs> It's and the rest, <laughs> on the way. On the way. Yeah. Your wife was in, from the States as well? Yes, yes. I met her in the States. You know, like, it's so interesting because yeah. we kind of moved the same time, the same year. The difference was just one month. So she moved in, I moved in September. She came on October. Ah, and she came on uh, November. About two, two months difference. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's the first time you met there? No, oh. actually, it took me about a year before I met her. Oh, yeah, but we, you see, we used to be in, in, in the same area, but in actual sense, I never met her. But I heard about her. 
Yeah. Wow. So all your family is here. The dad, all the families here, yeah, you know, she has uncles and uh, aunties still in the US, but, but the mother and the father is here. Yeah. I just wanted to know, was, it, was this idea of coming back home, did, did she accept it at the first time? You just wanted to know that. Uh, you see, I came to realize, uh, I think as a family leader, yeah. uh, you have to speak with clarity to the people that God has given you in charge of. So I, I was very clear what I wanted. Oh, and I had no ambiguity in it. So the way I explained things and what I wanted to achieve and where I wanted us to be as a family was very clear. So she didn't have a lot of like, what about this happens and things like that. So I took time to think about it before I brought the news. And the moment I spoke to her, she actually bought that. So it was much easier. <laughs> she believes in me. I mean, there are many things. Yeah. Sometimes I say crazy things and and she's like, okay, I believe in you and you can believe in you. Like, I really, I'm, I really admire it. Uh, what drives me mostly is the, the future that I want. You see, there's, everybody has a picture. What do you want to be? You know, like for me, I know you don't have too much time to be with this world. We have a short period of time. There are things I want to accomplish before my life ends. And I know I don't have the entire life to, to, to do things. You know, to just do one thing. So I want to try as many things as I can. Yeah. Because I feel like uh, my best legacy is to impact someone else's life. So and that's what that's what drives me. You know, mm -hmm. what legacy do I want to leave? What's, what's the what's the what's, what's my future like? You know, do I want to be just remembered for a few days or do I want to impact people whereby I can be remembered mm -hmm. for many days? And that's what gives me the power to try as many things as I can, you know. Uh, and try to impact and change other people's lives. So, your decision to come home has been successful. What would you tell the people who are in the States and stay at home? You know, this is the, the people who are abroad. Yeah, so... And, and like, do I come back home? Is it not ready? Is it the time? Is time ready? Is it, like, what do you encourage them? And what, before they come, what they, should they observe or plan? So, I think, you know, in life you have to really look at uh, your future. You first know you are in point A, you want to get to point B. What is that process like? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the things that you need to do to get to point A? Uh, some people just dream about things and they don't try. You know, it says, one day I'll do this, one day I'll do that. And those kind of people will never actually do anything. Yeah. So the first thing for somebody who wants to come to Kenya, you have to create your own life that you want. Um, what is the lifestyle you want? You want to have, maybe let's say you, have, you want to have a good house, okay, where you're not paying rent. Yeah. You want to have a good car, for example. Uh, maybe you want to have a, a business somewhere which is generating some funds. Because in Kenya, I mean, don't come to look for employment. <laughs> True. You want to be employed, true. stay in America. That is a better opportunity for you to be. Very true. Yeah, yeah, but when you come to Kenya, you create employment. Don't, don't come to Kenya looking for somebody to employ you. So I think the best thing is to first focus on the life you want to live when you come back. Mm -hmm. And then try to look at what can sustain you to live that life you want. Mm -hmm. and then from there, you'll be able to come up with maybe uh, several ideas. Maybe you can start. Uh, a few businesses that actually can be money generating. Like for me, when I came, uh, within my first year actually, I was able to start three businesses. I, I started a car wash, I started a restaurant, I started an animal feed business. And uh, the, for the idea, because I wanted something also that can sustain my daily life also. True. And it worked well, it worked well for me. It went well, all the three projects. It went well for me and it has been successful, I can't regret. Wow. So anybody want to actually come back home, there are a few things you also have to consider. Because even your savings will not be enough to sustain you in Kenya. Kenya is becoming very expensive, by the way. Uh, employment is still low. Yes. So you still have to think, how do I sustain myself? So, I believe if somebody was to come with all the cash they have saved, they, maybe it may not last them for a year or two. If you don't plan If you don't plan that, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So right now we are, I've, I've been to several of your projects, mm -hmm. probably over seven of them. And one thing uh, I would want you to, you know, I've really been encouraged of how 
the concept that you do, guys, this, uh, I've been to so many real estate and I can tell you guys that the price range for your properties are super low, like they're super affordable, like you can't compare with most of what we have in the market right now. So you came back home, you've been into real estate. So right now we will be in some of your properties, I've been to about seven of them. Now, can you just give us a story about this uh, property and uh, what you're doing in terms of property around Campbell County? So our company has specialized more into affordable housing because yes. uh, if you look at the population of our country, uh, we have about 74% of the population, being young people, they are under 35 years and, and below. And uh, 35 years and below, is some, that's someone who is trying to build himself up, you know, he's trying to bring up the family, maybe that's person that just left uh, college. Yeah. And you, you find that um, that's where my focus is, you know, my focus is in the mass. Uh, and for me, I want to be able to offer even houses less than a million. Um, the reason it being is we are more we are impacting more young people that way more than when you're building houses that are more expensive. So mm. th that's our main drive, and you find the reason is why most people actually developers who don't. Uh, the reason is why most developers don't go into this kind of development is because it's, it's not too much money in it. Really? But, yeah, but huh. also for me, I would like to impact people. You know, I better build more. Yeah, and, uh, and then, yeah, make less, less, you know, in terms of profits and things like that. Uh, as I told you, uh, my legacy, I want to leave a legacy that I impacted someone's and changed someone's life. And uh, so right now we are in, at a development um, where we have a three-bedroom house going for about, well, what is the price of this? The pre-sale was 5.8 billion. The, the pre-sale, mm -hmm. five point, guys, you cannot believe this house. At one point was selling at, at one point was selling at 5.8 million. Right. Like the market rate for this house is about 14, 13 million. Yeah. And I was, you know, I've gone to the some of the projects and I've been wowed by the price range. What what is your secret in this? My secret is because uh, you see one of my recipe actually in the secret of doing this construction. Yeah. I don't source out manpower. I don't source out. Uh, you know, uh, I say I have what we call in-house team. You know, an in-house team helps me to throw my costs. Mm -hmm. uh, you find most developers sometimes they don't have, they don't have uh, their own designers, for example. Yeah. They don't have their own engineers. They don't have their own lawyers, things like that. Mm -hmm. So you find they are sourcing out every service they are offering. Oh. And you find, for example, if it's an architect, Oh. So your brother is an architect. My brother. So is that is covered. Yeah, I have done finance in school. Oh. Uh, and then we have in uh, in-house team for marketing. Uh, we have we have in-house team for engineers. You know, mechanical, mm. structural, electrical engineers. So you don't have a contract. Wow. So we source our own materials. I mean, we have. You do it contract. direct. Like you've direct. cut all the middlemen. Yeah, we try as much as possible. That's the only way you can bring down the costs. Wow, and be able to sell at an affordable price. So, what about uh, you? Should, you know, I went to uh, the what do you call it, industrial area where you guys are making some technology that mm -hmm. you know, like, like it's almost a fast on this side. You right. know, very few people do that. So, can you just briefly tell us what is it about? So, after doing construction with bricks and mortar for most of our projects, we have come to realize that uh, there's a lot of wastage in terms of raw materials there's a lot of uh, wastage in terms of labor yeah uh, because with using brick and mortar you end up using a lot of labor and so much money goes to that and also the materials being used uh, you find some some of them they are very expensive so that increases the cost of the construction mm -hmm. so for us to be able to lower the cost of construction we had to think outside the box and we have come up with what we call Bucon technology which is now, from now henceforth, any other project you're taking will be done through Bitcoin technology. Bitcoin technology? Yes, so Bitcoin technology is simply uh, a house by design. What we mean by that is that we get what we call the architectural designs, and these are fed to the CNC machines. 
which are computer numeric controls. Yeah. The, the CNC, these are computer numeric controls. We are using uh, some softwares which are helping us to, to design the house in form of a panel, in form of building formwork. So how it works, once these architectural designs are fed into the CNCs, yeah. uh, it is able to cut the panels based on the shape of that house. So these panels are taken to site and they are assembled in form of a house, like you saw uh, on the yeah, other this, uh, yeah. uh, side. So guys, we'll be taking you just after the interview on the site and we show you what happens on the site, please. Yeah. Stick around. So the, the, the formwork, they, they, they are assembled in form of a house and then after that is done, uh, then you pour concrete on the cavities that are left by the formwork. Yeah. So within two to three hours, the casting is done. Uh, 12 hours down the line, you remove the panels and you have the structure. So the speed that the technology gives me helps me to save in terms of cost, time, and also labor. Because even assembling those panels, I don't need skilled labor. I just need, I can train people a few hours and they know how to assemble those panels. They are that simple because the machine makes it very easy for to, anyone to, build. to yeah for anyone to use those panel form work wow. wow how many houses have you built so far with that uh, design uh we have done the first project we did was uh we were con contracted by someone from the us yeah uh, they were doing rental units uh, i think they were like uh, 20 to 30 units i remember yeah. and then after that you know um after that then we were like, okay, how can we advance and make this uh, technology better? Uh, my brother, as I was telling you, the architect was able to go to China. He was able to learn how that technology works mm -hmm. when we were doing the first project. And then we came up together and thought how we can make that technology better. Now, right now, we have the industry here and is the only one in Kenya that is doing this. Uh, Look and I it. believe in Africa. And because um, these panels, these, there's nowhere else you can produce them. Actually, if you want to produce them, you, you either have to take your designs to places like China or US where they are doing those mass yeah. productions. Places in, uh, like China and US, they are big in formwork. And for us, being able to have the industry in Kenya is a plus. It's a big plus. It's a plus because th those costs of sending your designs and then transporting the formwork to Kenya is becoming very expensive. I know a few people who have done that. But I will tell you, their panels are nothing like what we're doing because our panels are adjustable. Mm -hmm. uh, we can change rooms, we can change, we can move walls, we can remove walls, we can uh, change walls. I, I like the other panels. The, once you get a design of a particular house, you don't change the design. Our mm -hmm. panel, we can do as many designs as, as panel, you want. As you want. Because you everything want. is custom made here. It is custom the design, made. Here. The, the design is custom made and everything is made. So you, you and also you find that ninety percent of our panels are similar. You know, for example, if a house is like five bedroom and another one is like uh, three bedroom, yeah, most of the panels will be similar. So for the five bedroom, we just need to add a small percentage of what is missing from the two, the, from the three bedroom, which now becomes easier. Another benefit is that uh, for us, we do not charge the cost of panels to the client. For example, if you want a three bedroom house, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to charge you the cost of panels because it will become very unaffordable to you. So I bear the costs of form work yeah. because the benefit is that I can reuse the panels as many times as I want. Yeah, mm. approximately between 150 to 250 times. Wow. Yeah. So I enjoy the benefit of uh, mass, mass production. Wow. Yeah. So is this something that you're willing to extend to different, you know, people who want to do you do project for them or you just do your own project? Actually, I am now building for anyone who wants to build a house because the technology is too, I would say it's too huge for my projects. My projects are too small compared with the technology. That you now I'm extending my services to any developer out there or mm -hmm. an individual who wants to build a, a unit. For example, it, if it's you who want to build your mom a unit in, in the village, you do it. I can do it for you. If it's a developer who wants to build like 100 units for, for selling, I can do that. So our business is now being spread to, mm -hmm. uh, to provide services to other people, not just for a project, but, but to, different people. People. to different people. I was really excited by this project uh, that we visited and, uh, and I think one or two, you partner with the, with the landowners. 
Right. How to do it? Like, what is? How does it? Probably some people would you give them some idea on, on how it's done. Right, right. So even this one, mm -hmm. even the the project we are in right now, yeah. uh, called Nawiri Gardens. This one was what we call joint venture agreement. Mm -hmm. So. How we started, we didn't have money. I mean, we didn't have money to start. You know, you go to, to buy a piece of land, you find it's like 14 million, and uh, it's like, what, 72 million. The like, cost of land in the country is crazy. It's crazy. So uh, no one has that kind of money, unless I don't know. So we didn't have that kind of money. So what we had was an idea. Mm -hmm. We partner with people with the land, and instead of them selling that land, we kind of increase the value. We develop that land, uh, add more value to it, whereby the owner is able to get something out of it for the rest of his life or he can actually give them a uh, give as a gift to his kids so it, it's a long-term investment so how we do it is that we add value to the piece of land mm -hmm. uh, we encourage people not to sell because mm -hmm. once we do the development we leave a number of units to the land owner that are equal to the value of that land mm -hmm. so the land owner at the end of the day can get rental income from those houses or he can sell some of the units, you know, uh, for to do one or two things that he wanted mm. to do. But in actual sense, is that we, we, we add value to that piece of land. So you, you, I have land, basically. You come to me, we partner. I'm like, you don't have the 40 million or the 100 million I want for the land. So what you do is like, you will give me equal number of houses that equal the number of the price I can pay. Yes, for that land. Um. So what usually happens is that, uh, and some people might say, okay, I don't want, I don't want to have houses. I want money. So what you do? We just, we say, for example, if I'm giving you ten units equal to the value of that land. Mm -hmm. I can sell the, I can put the houses in the market. I sell the others, mm -hmm. and then I give you that cash. Uh, yeah. So and that at least. You have your capital running. Yes, yes. Instead of taking like let's say a hundred million, mm -hmm. giving buying for property, right. you need to start developing. Yes. So this a yes. hundred million you start developing. You start the, developing the property. Yes, yes. So when you sell it, you just like okay, this is money. Yeah, this is money you can give to the owner if they want a portion of that money, or the owner can keep the houses for rent or or sell them in the future days. We, you know, uh, and. Uh, so many Kenyans have been duped in terms of property, buying land and stuff. Mm. What is the surety for them? Like you, you, you can secure, you know, uh, I'm from this country or from, from Kenya, I'm giving you 10 million for property. What is my security? From? So when it comes to the security of the client, you know, and because most people have lost money through this kind of development, the reason is why we were thinking outside the box and come up with the technology was to help us to be able to work closely with the customer. How we are changing this uh, corning of people mm. is that I am spending my money fast in every process that I'm doing. For example, let's say you're doing a three-bedroom house. Yeah. A three-bedroom house, I'm going to divide it maybe into four sections. Maybe this is the foundation, yeah. this is the walling, maybe this roofing and the finishes. Yeah. So assuming the foundation will cost me two million, just an example. Mm -hmm. I'll spend my two million fast and they lay the foundation without you paying anything. Then once you come and verify, you can use your relatives, for, especially for people who are living outside the country, yeah. you can use your relatives, uh, you can use your friends, they can come and verify. They will not, they'll not be involved in the time of construction, but, just to check. but they can come and verify for you and take photos, maybe share with you and see the foundation has been done. Upon that time now, you, you reimburse me, the two mm. million that I've spent. Then we go to the next section, which is walling. Mm. Maybe it's walling. With my technology, I can do the walls and the slab at the same time, if it's a machine. Yeah. So I'll use my own money again. I do the walls and the slab. Mm. Then after you verify it, it has been done according to the specifications. It's, uh, it's, it's by the agreed upon terms. Then you reimburse me the funds until the house is complete. Mm. So I will always be ahead of you. Is oh, the, is my and, uh, and from my end as a customer, you know yeah. my money is secure. Yeah, so you, there's no way you're going to tell me uh, I lost my money. Because if there was to lose money, yeah. I would lose my money first. Because so your money is that is secure. Super nice, guys. Yeah. Super nice. So many of the projects sometimes you showcase is like the pre-sale and stuff. Mm. Sometimes it's good to do pre-sale. Like, right. uh, like this house, pre-sale was 5.8. Mm. Right now it's 
so 6.5. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you, if you trust them, you can, you know, I believe it's sometimes it's good they can secure money. Mm -hmm. But also also believe like what you guys are doing is super nice. So uh, um, is there any other thing that you guys right now working on and you would like, you know, potential buyers? Um, and then I'll tell you for sure. Right now, I have no product that is on for sale. I'm in the process of finishing all the projects that I've sold. Yeah. I like doing small projects that are manageable. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do so much. Uh, I like doing small ones so that once I finish that, you go to the now next I can one. go to the next one. Like this one is already complete by uh, 24th will be handing over mm -hmm. and then I'll be able to concentrate more on another project. Yeah. So before I start another project I'll have to finish those ones mm -hmm. and then uh, the rest will come later, maybe towards the end of the year, um, towards the end of next year. Yeah. But in the process I can also, I'm also doing projects for other people mm -hmm. like individual houses uh, or people are doing big developments. I'm also uh, I'm still doing that through Bircon Technology, the one I'm telling you. And because that one will carry all the construction mm -hmm. uh, constructions on site. And that, is that, that is the future. That is the future. Uh, that's the future because these are the last projects I'm doing with mm -hmm. uh, brick and mortar. Yeah. Uh, and my, 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 my thing is I want to make sure that anyone who comes to us yeah. can actually afford a house. Everyone that comes to you. Anyone. Without, regardless of your, I hope, regardless of your, your income, mm -hmm. we'll structure something that you will end up owning a house because that's our vision. And not wow. only for the Kenyans, but we want to do this across Africa. So guys, if you're planning for some major affordable house, mm -hmm. I think there's no one who's better than you guys and uh, you guys are doing amazing things. We're going to show you guys what is on the other end, what they're doing. Some people who probably we have chamas or you know we are out there and we have a group and we want to invest uh, through you. How, what are the things that we can, what are the packages that you can give us? Right, right. So mm -hmm. having lived in the US for more than 10 years, I understand the desire for people to invest in the country. Yeah. And some people lack the right person to actually do the work. I've had many people who have lost money through their brothers, yeah. their sisters, their parents. And instead of having joy, you know, at the end of the day, you find people are fighting. So for us, how we are doing it, we are really extending an investment opportunity for any group or any person who wants to invest back home. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're using the same method for the people in the US. For example, let's say they have a piece of land, they want to develop, to develop houses for sale. So, as I said, uh, the opportunity I'm offering people from outside, for them not to lose money, mm -hmm. it's that I will use my money in every process. If it's foundation, I will use my own money, they reimburse me. If it's walling, if it's roofing and finishes, in every process I will use my, my money first, such that they will be the one who who will choose whether to pay me or not. So I'm giving them an opportunity to, to push their project. <laughs> not only that, I'm giving them an opportunity uh, uh, not to steal from me, but yeah. if, if you, sometimes, sometimes you, people feel like if you give the money to someone ahead of time before the work is done, yes. that somebody might not do the work. True. But for me, I'm doing the opposite now. I'm putting myself in the, in the, in the, the shoes, shoes of, the, of the customer, so whereby I'm using my money first before they pay me. So you've done such projects before? I have done such kind of projects. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually doing finishing one in Roca. Yeah. This is for my friends who are in America. Yeah. Uh, all these guys live in the United States. Yeah. And uh, for this project in Roca, um, after I was uh, successful in this industry, uh, I, was, I gathered a few friends of mine. They came together, they bought mm -hmm. the land and now I'm doing construction for them and they are finishing that uh, construction. Uh, and that's the method that actually we are using. So currently I'm doing a project for people in the US yeah. and the desire was to show them you don't have to use relatives to invest uh, because if you use your relatives, everybody is talking about losing money, mm -hmm. losing your friends, you're losing money. And that's what I was telling you, in business sometimes you don't have to, to put trust first. You have to test. So uh, I told these guys, let's sit down. We say we are doing this project, and that project is being done for sale. For us, 
we are doing it at cost. What I mean is that they, they are all, we are only charging them the cost of materials and labor. So whatever, how, whatever, amount, of, uh, whatever amount of money they will sell, uh, the, uh, all the profits cost them. Because for me, mm. I'm, uh, I'm just a contractor on that project. Uh. And that's what I want to do for people outside the country. So we just agree this project is going to cost this much. And as I said, every step I'm going to use my money first, then they reimburse, they reimburse me okay. for any development I want to do. Whether it's apartments, whether it's bungalows, whether it's the houses for their retirement, that's the process I want to, to, to take. So uh, basically, you are doing a project for somebody, mm. he has the land, but you're using your money fast. fast. In every then level. reimburse me at this stage, we go yeah. to the next step. But I want to make it clear, it's not that I'm going to use my money for the entire house. Yeah. So once we agree, for example, this house will cost me $6 million to build, mm -hmm. and we, we will say foundation will cost a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. So I do the foundation, and upon completion of the foundation, they reimburse me the money I've used for that foundation. Mm -hmm. foundation. Then I go to the walling. I will use my money first on the walling, mm -hmm. and then they reimburse me for the walling until the house is complete. Wow. Yeah, that way nobody will say I've lost money mm. or somebody I, I send money and, and it never did the right thing. Wow, yeah, wow. This is, like I think you, in terms of the market, you're really way ahead of the market in the way you see it, in the way you want to reach out to customer. You know, the you know, the need and you know, the problem, right? Right, and you're coming, you're covering up in a very, very, you know. You know the best way in terms of technology right. and in terms of you know cost. Some of the things that really make people be scared in terms of investing. So guys, uh, we're going to take you to the construction site. I don't know if you want to give them an email or something. Yeah, like. yeah. So you can reach me through my phone number, which is plus two five four seven two three seven nine six zero zero four, or you can email me through Fred at Bilcon Technology Limited dot co dot ke. Again, my phone number is plus 254-723-796-004. Uh, my email is fred at buconetechnologylimited.co.ke. Thank you. So guys, let's see. Let's go on the other side and see the site. My message to all my friends who are outside the country, especially in America, UK, Dubai and other places, uh, I've come to realize that most people when they come to US or they go to any outside the country, you know, they go selling the product uh, and you find they're not teaching you how you can make that product. So for me, what I'm doing is actually helping people to create the product they can sell for profit. For example, if you want to build houses for sale, I want to help you to do this kind of development. This, this project comprising of that seven units, I started in 2019. Uh, I was still in, in, in America uh, before I came back fully. And this is something I would like people also to, to get into. The industry is huge enough for anyone to come in and you know make their, their profit and change people's lives. So this is what I want to do for anyone who is outside the country and anyone who has the desire to invest in the country.
guys it's been a busy day we are on the last project to showcase to you guys today and yeah so where are we Fred? Uh, we are at Ruaka yeah. and this is called Zuri Ridge Apartments uh, this project belongs to my friends in California yeah uh, I gathered them together and I told them we can do investment back home in the right way you know we wanted to change the narrative of Oh, I sent money to my mother, I sent money to my relatives, yeah. and I got duped. So we said, we have the money, we have the resources, we can do business the right way by putting the right people in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. So we, I happened to be the lead on this project, yeah. from buying the land to developing. Now we are on the final finishes, and uh, this group is very happy. Yeah. I've taken all the weight from them. Nobody knows where the, the cement is coming, coming from. from. <laughs> no one has ever received a call. Fundis are not on site, things like that. So I've taken all that trouble on myself. Yeah. And these guys, they are half peace, wherever they are. You know, they continue with, their, with the yeah, job with as the normal. Job and the work is ongoing as well. And we've never had any issues. We usually have meetings like every... Currently, we'll be having meetings every Friday. Yeah. Uh, giving the updates on where we are, what are the <laughs> targets for that week and has been working very well. This is something I'd like to do for people in US, uh, in Australia, in UK, or anyone who is outside the country. You don't have to use your relatives to do the business. I mean, it can be done the right way with the right people who have the right focus. Uh, so please, uh, you can reach out to me and I can show you how this can get done. So this is, uh, what, I, I saw it's a three bedroom, right? Uh, this is a three bedroom. Yeah. Uh, they are all for sale. Currently they are going for 7.5 million. On mortgage they are going for 8.5 yeah and we have two units remaining only so the rest already sold. the rest sold. yeah the rest already is sold so guys three bedroom for seven million in Ruaka guys you can show them the drone shot for Ruaka you know like guys your prices it's just something else I'm sure there are some some houses here, three bedroom. How much are they going yeah, for? They're going about fourteen point. Fourteen million. It's 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 yeah. it's on it's not here, so it's there are houses here going for fourteen million. So yeah, just keep up with the spirit. Mm. When you scale to a bigger height, please don't don't add the price. Don't right, add the right ceiling, right. please. We, we have to remain affordable. That's our main vision. You know, yes. We want people to own houses. Yeah. We want young people to be able to uh, to have a place they can call home. Yeah. And that's what drives us. So we cannot hike the prices to unreasonable yeah. uh, heights until everybody now is On, able is to, a yeah, home owns, owner owns a home. Yeah. So guys, thank you so much. I will leave all the description from Fred on the description box. And uh, yeah, if you need to drink them out, please check them on their website. Don't come through me. Uh, I like you to talk to him straight. The mobile phone he gave is his mobile phone. At the same time, the office line. So guys, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. If you need such inspirational stories, yeah, just leave a comment on the description box. If you need us to highlight so many stories such as these that will change people's life, that will reach out to many people, Reach, reach, reach out to me. Check the description box. I have all my contact, my details, and as well. So see you guys on the next one. So I'd like to encourage anyone who'd like to invest back home. Do not be afraid. Only use the right process. Uh, don't use trust. Don't say your mother or your dad is an engineer or your friends are in construction. Then you just trust them. You send your money. You might end up losing money that way. So we usually do uh, a process of investment. Uh, Zuri has become a very successful story. These guys, they are in California. You can call them. You can ask. You can ask them about the process. I mean, it's it's just an amazing uh, process. And these people, they have peace of mind. They, no one has ever come uh, from US to come and check where the building is. I usually report to them every single week. So I mean, this is something we can do. It's doable. It's doable. Please talk to me. I want to show you how you can invest. Uh, without losing your money. Subscribe to African Traveler and support him. He's doing a great thing. This guy, I believe, is changing the narrative about Africa, about Kenya. You know, we've been, people have talked about nasty things about us. I mean, and everybody knows about the bad things about Africa, but no one tells the good stories about Africa. He's one of the guys that I've come to know is changing the way people 
uh, view Africa and this is going to revolutionize how even other people see Africa so support him subscribe to his channel and you know let's be together and change the narrative thank you thank you so much for the kind words see you guys on the next one subscribe